Everybody, welcome to Cocktail Time, one and all. It is Friday night. We are here at Four Player Network, and that can mean only one thing. It is time to drink luscious, luscious alcohol and speak about the many things. The blinky things, blinking things, whatever the fuck we talk about and all that kind of stuff. Hey, everybody, welcome to Cocktail Time. I'm your host, Joseph Christ, here at Four Player Network. And with me, as per usual, is Bob Webb. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing pretty well. Pretty well. I'm doing uh, pretty good. And Chris Davis. How are you, Mr. Chris Davis? (sighs) Ask me again sometime next week. Why are we asking you again sometime next week? Explain to the audience exactly... What state you are in? I have had, had very little fun this week because I have been devoting myself to making Game of the Year content, and it's been a bit of a bitch. And where can everyone find this so-called Game of the Year content? Well, it is available on the main site. It, Album each video site. has its own single page, but you can also find it on YouTube. That's amazing. That is amazing. Now there's one every day? Is that what's going on? One every day? Uh, every that's person. my aim, and I've been sticking to it. Uh, subscribers get access to the videos a day early. Subscribers get access to the videos a day early. I want you to say that again, but I want, it, I want to hear it with gusto. Subscribers get access <laughs> one day early. <laughs> that's that's kind of gusto I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. That's cool. So who have we had so far? We've had Jeff, right? Quality Beats, who's actually in chat. I see him right now. We've had George uh, we, Genes- George Jefferson, who's moving on up kinda. to the top. Yeah. To this great big apartment in the sky. He's moving on up to the top. No, it's Janet Dennison. He's a British man. Uh, is he still going to get a piece of the pie? He'll get a piece of the pie. Oh, yeah. It's more of a... What, it's, what, it's, what's a British pie? It's more meat, meat pie, wouldn't it be? <laughs> Something? I don't know. Do, what do, British do people the British eat, eat pie? Um, uh, That's a good question. Do we have any British people in... I think they eat pie, but there's meat inside instead of fruit. See, I just... I've never, I've never known a British man to eat pie, so... I think they eat pies. I don't think they live on, like, another planet. I think... <laughs> I think you'd still get pies in in England. I figure they'd be like a small, you know, tart pastry kind of like know, like country. a like I I could see that like a small like instead of a big pie like a small little like a like in America we have personal pizzas they have personal pies in Britain. Yeah, they they've got like scones, right? Something like that. Like a, like like a scone, but a British scone. Scone. Jordan is saying crumpets. 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 Which is possible. So Everything long, I know about Britain, I learned from Mary Poppins. So I don't know anything. I know they have chimney sweeps and they have nannies. <laughs> and if you go to a park and you start dancing, uh, you'll dance with animated animals. And that's pretty much as, as much as I know. And if you go to the bank to, to take out your money, everyone panics. Because that's what happens at Mary Poppins. Let me, can I tell you a secret? Yes. I love Mary Poppins. I really do. I've can I, can I tell you a secret? What's that? I've never seen Mary Poppins. You've never seen Mary Poppins. I am an uncultured American fucktard, okay? Um, I'm sorry. Oh, first of all, Mary Poppins is an American movie. It's a Disney movie. It has fake British people in it. Yeah. They're not real British and people. In fact, they they're coming out with a movie all about the making of that movie. Yeah, Saving Mr. Banks. 
uh, something like that. I don't know what it is. All I know is it has Tom Hanks, and that's about it. And somebody Wait, else. In it. Thought... Tom, Tom, Tom Wanks plays Disney, Walt Disney. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really amazing about Tom Wanks... Tom... Tom Wanks. <laughs> I just called him Tom Wanks, which... Yeah, I thought you were doing that intentionally. No, just... that was a... Com- <laughs> <laughs> that was a complete mistake, and it's a mistake I'm going to make all the time. So the best thing about Tom Wanks in this movie... <laughs> you know what? If I was a... That would be a great porno name, wouldn't it? Tom Wanks? It seems like a rather oh. lonely porno name, though. Maybe. He just okay, did mas- I'm going to mas- go ahead and Google it. Masturbation <sighs> porn? God, that's a great porno name, Tom Wanks. <laughs> so anyway, the great thing about Tom Wanks in uh, Saving Mr. Banks... Is that he uses the same exact accent as the uh, as the guard in uh, and uh, the Green Mile, so it's very strange to watch. I think because he sounds just like uh, the same thing. According to Urban Dictionary, Tom Wanks is the gay version of Tom Hanks. Really? <laughs> uh, what movies has he done? I'm gonna IMDb uh, this bullshit. I want to hear them. Well, no, that this, I, if this is just an Urban Dictionary, you know. Definition. So, all right. Chad is now uh, putting out uh, parodies that Tom Wanks would be in, like "I Wish I Was Big," Tom Wanks, and, <laughs> Tom Wanks and Wanks Away, uh, a blow versus the volcano. I don't, I don't know. That one's not very good. <laughs> Jerking Private Ryan. I like that one. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Big is starring Tom Wanks. Oh man. Speaking. Boy Toy Story? Boy Toy Story. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Boy Toy Story. <laughs> I think you just won. I think you just won. <laughs> Sticky Widget says the pink mile. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Boy Toy Story. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of, of triple X parodies, I, uh, I really got into those over the weekend, and I found my two favorite that I think are, are the absolute best. Uh, the very first is is called Not the Cosbys. Now, the wonderful thing, it's, so it's basically the Cosby show, but porno. But the thing about this, I, I want you to listen to me very carefully because this is, this is very important, what I'm, about, what I'm about to say. There comes a point when a porno movie, a porno parody, ceases being a parody and actually becomes a homage to the foundational material. A homage to the point to where you could take out the sex... And as a homage, it would be exceptionally entertaining. And not the Cosby's really, really nails it. Like, I've never seen. It captures the 90s and the Cosby Show sitcominess of the 90s perfectly. I, hold on one second. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this in the chat. Oh, God. Oh, this is the cover. I think I saw, I saw you. Uh... This is the trailer. And uh, hold on one second. I might lose you guys for a second. Okay. So this, this is completely safe for work. Okay? It's in chat. It's completely safe for work. It's on YouTube. But it is fucking brilliant. It is a... I think there's, there's one comment on this, and he calls it a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> and it really is. It really is. Anyway, it's completely safe for work. So there's this one, and then there's one about the the Wizard of Oz, which is looks the the production quality is is quite good for the Wizard of Oz one. And there's a show, there's singing, there's show tunes, and they do musical numbers. So, <laughs> I am rather impressed by the quality thus far of the not the Cosby's, right? Yes. Wait till you see the guy playing Bill Cosby speak. He nails it. Oh, really? Oh, he nails it. <laughs> and the whole thing is done so well. It's, it's really impressive. Really impressive. It's not like the Citizen Kane of porn, but it's, it's, it's probably some of the best stuff I've, I've ever seen. Wow, no, he does nail it. This, does is, it? <laughs> this is amazing. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Okay, now now they're starting to get into dark territory here. They they do. There is there is you know. But anyway, anyway, yeah. So 
I need to watch. I've seen some scenes of the entirety of Not the Cosby's, and uh, the sex is pretty hot too, which which helps, which is also which is also good. Um, how did we get on this? What were we talking about? Well, Tom, Tom Wanks. Wanks. Tom Wanks is what happened. We're talking what about is the, the, ty- the movies he's been through, and a lot of them are just they're they're Tom already Hanks porn sports. titles of what? Tom Hanks movies. Pretty much, yeah, big and uh, yeah. a couple I others. Think my favorite listed by Chet here is a uh, Turner and Cooch. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that oh, is the, the Forrest Gump, Forrest Hump. Forrest Hump. That's an yeah, easy one. Yeah, that's expected. Though. Oh, Sleepless in Seattle. That's that's a. That's just that sounds kind of like a porno. That implies it. Yeah, definitely. So, to get to to basics here, you have to see you have to see uh, uh, Mary Poppins, Chris. It's actually really good. The music is really good. It's it's very dark and creepy at points. I I really I truly recommend it. It's not it's not like a kids movie. You know, it's one of those movies where kids kind of enjoy it, but it's definitely got a lot of adult stuff in there as well. You don't seem you don't seem convinced. Eh, I'll wait until the Michael Bay remake. See how that goes. That's what he, he needs a script. Be careful. Hey, hey, Hello. that man doesn't need a script. He Listen. can make whatever the fuck he wants. Listen, you can't you can't blame. Michael Bay, because in his defense, he's never actually seen a good performance. So, <laughs> poor guy, poor guy. Although, but, but honestly, poor guy though, and his billions. Of honestly, dollars. honestly though, the guy's not an actor. You know, there's a reason he's he's behind the camera instead of in front of it. So, you know, Vudic is very impressed <laughs> by the cause guy playing Bill Cosby. Vudek is saying, Joseph is right, this guy fucking nails it. He totally does. And I think in the movie he does nail a lot of stuff, actually, <laughs> throughout, <laughs> throughout the film. Throughout the film. It is a porno, so... And there's, there is a part two. There is a Not the Cosby's 2, and Not the Cosby's 2, I think, comes in a two-disc collector's set. So just to let you know, my birthday's in August. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets me the... Two disc collectors just, said. Why does um, the second disc being like there's no porn on it? It's just like straight up episodes that they did. <laughs> right. They like they just recreate like the, the best of the, the, the best Cosby of the Cosby show. shows. They're like, fuck, we're really good at this. Let's just do the show. <laughs> you know? But there's I mean, if you look, <clears throat> there's one company kind of specializes in these and they do uh they do a uh, a married with children one. They do uh, not the Cosby's, of course. Uh, they they do like a, a a Baywatch one. They do a lot of them, and I think all they try to huh. do them. There's a Scooby Doo one. Um, yeah. Anyway, porn parodies, porn parodies, and Mary Poppins, and Tom Wanks. All right, let's do our toast of. The week. Uh, I'll go first. I'm actually. I'm gonna toast this week to Clay Entertainment. Is it Clay? The people who did Don't Starve. I downloaded Don't Starve on the PSN this week. It's it was actually Don't Starve is the free game if you are a PSN member on placed on PlayStation Four or PlayStation Three. But I think it's on PlayStation Four, and uh, it's really good. I'm really kind of enjoying it. It's taken me a little time to to get into it. And then I kind of hit, I kind of hit a plateau, and I was waiting for something to happen, and that thing did happen. And I got, I started, my character started going insane, and I started getting all the the crazy things that kind of happened in the game, and I really got into it. And I just finished a really long run, and I got up to day seventeen, and I died. Uh, so now I'm I'm back to square one. But anyway, I'm having a really good time with it, really enjoying it, um, and I'll probably talk about the, that tonight. So my toast goes out to them. And what am I drinking tonight? Tonight I'm drinking, I have a, a shot of vodka, as is seen. And I have a couple of twisted teas tonight that I'm I am drinking down. So that's, that is what's on my agenda. Uh, Chris Davis, you are next. Okay, uh, tonight I have a concoction of Capri Sun and vodka. Oh, uh, uh, which uh, I need to stir every now and then. That's, so. like, that's like what a fourth Fair grader would drink if they want to get drunk. <laughs> so this will this will probably put me down. I I overindulged in the vodka, so 
And uh, tonight I'm going to toast to the Game of the Year content, which I swear to God I'm over the hump on, and I'm so looking forward to being finished with it next week. Especially some of the, the quality that's been put into these videos by all. Joseph's video I'm editing right now, it's almost done. It's goddamn hilarious at times. <laughs> Uh, sure. Pull some shit. You you people are gonna want to see this this video. It's good. What is that going up tomorrow? Uh, it'll go live. Uh, it'll go live Sunday. Uh, so, it'll go live to subscribers tomorrow morning. All right. Lucky lucky subscribers. Uh, what do you? Uh, 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 Bob is next. Yeah, I'm drinking. Um, one across the street got some tall boys of Coors Light. Coors Light. Uh, Eh, it's it's like water and uh, yeah. vodka, just because it sort of have to right. do a shot of. Uh, and my shot goes to um, the CES and the announcements that came out of it, especially PlayStation Now. Oh, that's a big and, one we got to talk about tonight. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that because it's basically what we predicted um, Sony would be doing with uh, the acquisition of Kai Kai. Kai, Kai. So I had some cool shit. Yeah, yeah, I was I was excited. All right, then let us toast my thing here. All right, one and two and three. Yeah, there's vodka in there already. Yeah, that's how you do it. You gotta, you gotta do. We gotta put the, we gotta put the vodka in there. You gotta reach deep. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta reach deep. All right, all right. Cut the music. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. <sighs> Let's talk about CES. Because I'm kind of excited about it. Now, have we all, did you, you know, bef- you go for, go for Before it. we do that, yeah. I, I apologize, but I need to change my toast. So I just realized why I should have toasted to. Okay, you can go ahead. I'll, uh, I should have toasted to Ska Studios for their release of Time Viking and Space Raptor. Uh, I, I think not, I've fallen in love with this game. I'm not familiar with this game. Do you remember a little game in 2009 called I Made a Game with Zombies in it? Yes. This is the spiritual successor by the same developer. We talked about this a bit last week, I think, and I have not gotten it yeah. yet. We mentioned it briefly toward the end. You did, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. My well, hair, I may have mentioned it, but my, I, didn't, I, I hadn't played it. My then. hair is no, a I think you mess. mentioned it just came out. But it's, it's so good, man. Just spend a fucking dollar and go buy it. What 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 is it? It's a side scrolling twin stick shooter. Okay. Okay. And uh really the, the you just have to experience it. Mm-hmm. Have to ch- is it on Steam or is it where where, where do I find it's this? It's only on uh XBL indie games. I, I So I, only on the three sixty. My three sixty is like unhooked and in a corner somewhere. Well, plug it back in, buy it, and play it. People need to like stop making stuff for last gen. It's next gen now, god damn it. Uh, stop with this last I, gen I bullshit. Scott Studios is like one of the, the only people that... Um, one, of the, one of the few developers that has had a, a pretty positive relationship with Microsoft and, um, and they're, they're uh, as being a publisher, I guess. Well, so they're... Of, uh, I mean, speak, speaking of like developers with... With a uh, good good uh, relationships with Microsoft, uh, I think it was announced today that Dead uh, State of Decay, not State of Decay, Undead Labs, uh, just signed a multi-title, multi-year contract with Microsoft Studios. I don't think they said it was multi-title, but they said they were extending oh, no, their. No, no, no. It's, it, it definitely said multi-title. I spoke to I spoke to Sonya today. And Chris, oh. look at look at Chris's face. He's stuck. He's frozen. Oh, there he is. Okay, <laughs> he's getting the cat. Now it's definitely multi-title. Definitely multi-title. Good. Hopefully that means a sequel to State of Decay and in the MMO. Uh, you know, I, I think they should skip on the MMO. Yeah. Don't. If don't, you don't have to make an MMO, don't fucking do it. Don't make an MMO. It's a bad idea. Don't fucking do it. If 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 they if they ever hired me as a consultant, I'd say don't make an MMO. That's exactly what I'd say. Now give me my money. That's all I'd say. <laughs> millions. <laughs> Give me my millions. Don't make it up more. You're welcome. You're welcome. So. I mean, you can like have like 
a relatively good sized multiplayer. We just do like do instanced kind of shit. Right. And if you want to have that kind of you know random interaction with people, uh, just do what you know like Guild Wars has done in the past, or like even um, a Journey, where you right. just have random people pop up every once in a while. Yeah, that, that's fine. You know, the cooperative yeah. gameplay more than anything. You know, I think that'd be fine. I think that'd be fine. But uh, so yeah, just make it console specific. Don't release it on PC and and just make like the first console MMO. I'm fine. With, well, it wouldn't be the first. There's there's a bunch now. I mean, if you yeah, there's the a PS, few console MMOs. If you the PS4, well, there's console like, only MMO. Well, yeah. Well, console yeah. Specific. There's actually, if you want to count Dust, uh, it's kind of an MMO. Uh, not really. Dust is not really an MMO. Not really. It combines with an MMO, but it's not an MMO. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like it's like if a, if an MMO was a shark going through the or a whale, like dust is like the little sucker fish that are feeding off of it parasitically. It's kind of what it is. <laughs> but you have games like Warframe, and Warframe is on the PS4, and that's uh, that's not exclusive, right. but that's that's kind of an MMO. But you know, also Warframe is an instanced MMO at its core. It's one of my issues with it. Uh, but you have, I think. Um, what is it? Hounds of War or War something? Planes, World War II planes and stuff, which is on the PS4. And I see it. It's weird. It's not on the PSN. So I guess it's not available in my region, North America. But I see it on uh, the PS4 streams. But the people playing it are not foreign. So I don't know where the fuck this game is, is sold. It's called like Warhawks. Not Warhawk. It's the, maybe somebody in chat knows what it is. It's basically like an MMO, large scale MMO, but you're 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 a plane in World War Two. Warframe, Warframe, Toastcast War. has it. Toastcast, Warframe, and I don't know. Maybe somebody. And I have not looked this up. Usually, I just, I just uh, farm frame worst. I don't know. Maybe it sucks. But anyway, I don't know where it's available because I can't purchase it, and everyone playing it is not foreign, and I don't know where it is. It's sort of like a World of War play. It's a smiley list. It's kind of like that. But, um... Mm. I don't know. So, any CES. We gotta, get it, we gotta talk about CES. Gotta talk about CES. So, CES happened, and people talked about a lot of things. Bendy things and phones and cameras that cost way too much. And I don't give a shit about any of that fucking crap. I was gonna throw that out right now. I don't give a shit about phones that bend or TVs that you can put around your dick. I don't care about any of that bullshit. What I do care about, however, is PlayStation Now, <clears throat> which, to me, is kind of like a, a, a giant game changer. <clears throat> so basically what happened uh, two years ago for, what was it, $320 million? Or 30, it was a three and a two. And I'm not sure it was $32 million or $320 million. Uh, Sony bought Guy Kai. For those who don't remember, Guy Kai was the uh, video game streaming service, kind of like OnLive. There was two. There was OnLive and Guy Kai. Guy Kai got purchased by Sony and then kind of went away. And OnLive sort of continued on and it kind of puttered out and I think they're just kind of dead now for the most part. But Guy Kai got bought. And that's, you know, everyone knows in the tech industry what you want to do is you want to make something and then get bought for a lot of money. And that's, that's the goal for a lot of people. So it got, it got bought two years ago. It disappeared. And now it has suddenly resurfaced as PlayStation Now, which is basically Sony's streaming service. It will allow people on the PS4, on the Vita, and eventually on tablets and on smart TVs, non-Sony products, to stream Sony games for a subscription or a rental fee. Uh, so basically, I can be on my PS4 and I can play The Last of Us. Even though I, you know, it, it sort of it somewhat solves the backwards compatibility problem, but not really. But the biggest thing about this, and I've said this for a while now, is that PlayStation's biggest gaming asset is their history. It's their six, seven year history, all the way back to the PlayStation 1. And if they can harness that in this generation, they'll be unstoppable. And this is kind of the beginning of that. I mean, imagine buying a PlayStation 4. And not only having access to PlayStation 4 games, but having access to the entire PlayStation library going back to the PlayStation 1. And being able to stream games instantly with little to no lag for either a subscription fee or something that's, that's tied into your PlayStation Network account, that kind of thing. That's pretty fucking amazing. 
I mean, that, that blows the doors open, I think. And I don't see, you know, I don't see Xbox. First of all, you know, I, I, there's a lot of Microsoft games I like, but w- one thing they don't have is history, you know. I mean, what do they, they have Halo and they have Gears of War. They came to the, you know, they came onto the scene pretty late. The original Xbox had Halo, and I'm not sure if they had very much other than that that was really huge. They had a... Uh, the big mech game that I loved, of course, which is everyone loves. But, um, I mean, they don't have that, that historical pedigree behind them. So if they did something like this, I don't think it would, you know, capture enough punch. The only other company that has the histor- his, you know, historical pedigree is, is, is Nintendo. And, Chris, you and I have spoke about how their virtual console was kind of a mess, right? Oh, it's, it's beyond a mess. It I mean, was a piece of shit. I mean, they fumbled the ball on that 100%, right? I mean, not only did they delay and delay and delay the release of you know hot games that you know would have sold millions of copies early on, uh, they, they didn't fulfill their obligations of getting third-party, old-timey NES, Super Nintendo, and N64 publishers on board. Right. Yeah. That's so a real is, fucking disappointed. A lot of it's really hard because you don't know who the owns the um, the rights to it anymore. Yeah, you gotta figure that out. It shouldn't be that hard. It, you know, it gets pretty complicated because a lot of times rights to IPs and stuff are packaged in larger packages that people purchase. People are like, "Oh, I'll buy." Like, remember when um, the, 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 not two K, whatever the recent cl- publisher that closed was it two K? No, it was a. Uh, it was THQ. THQ. When THQ yeah. closed, remember the auctions? How confusing the auctions were? It's like, oh, yeah, we'll yeah. buy this IP, we'll, we'll buy this IP, and then they're like, okay, well, we're going to package the rest of these IPs into a giant package, and whoever wants them gets them. And I don't know who the fuck bought those. Some people just buy all these IPs, and they don't know what the hell they're going to do with them. They just sit on them, you know? Maybe yeah. they'll get a check every well, once I mean, in a while. Otherwise, some of the IPs just won't sell. So. Yeah, maybe they'll get a check every once in a while. And that's, that's kind of why it's hard to kind of, you know... Figure that stuff out, but I mean, it's it's they need to do the legwork to do it. I know what you're saying. Problem with Nintendo yeah. is that they have to go all the way back to 1983. I mean, they have a lot of legwork to do. I mean, a huge amount. But I mean, this is kind of a, a huge deal. I mean, and the thing is that's funny. This is this is coming soon. I mean, this is not two years down the road. This is not 2016. This is like the the beta for PlayStation Now is starting soon, like in the fall in the spring. Or in the next couple of months. It's supposed to be released as a whole in the summer, if I recall. In the summer, exactly. Like, this is, this is a fucking freight train barreling down the tracks. And if the summer can come and they can go, hey, you have a PS4, you can have all these PS4 games that you can play, and now here's a giant number of PlayStation 3 games. Oh, and here's a growing library of original PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games. You know, titles from admittedly the, the two best consoles ever produced, ever. Probably in that, or probably in the PlayStation Two and PlayStation One order. PlayStation One, I have a, a soft spot in my heart for PlayStation One, just because you play some of those games and it's like, oh, they're trying so hard. You know, it has, has that that sort of like, oh, the controls suck and the graphics are just trying so hard. You play you play Nightmare Creatures and it's like, oh man, they're trying so hard to make it look good. It's so it's so terrible, but I love it. But you know, PlayStation Two is was a mecca in gaming and what it what it would have brought. And if they can open up that library, I mean, and people know that. I mean, gamers know this. I mean, we're not just talking about. I think even even just your your common Call of Duty player, if they're sort of pay attention to the industry at all, I think they know the value that's inherent in that library. So you know. If, if 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 Sony can pull this off, and they can solve problems like lag, they can solve problems, you know, especially when lot when millions of people are doing this shit at the same time, you know, they're gonna have to buy a lot of server farms and a lot of cloud places, you know. Um, yeah, the service is gonna be real sketchy. Oh no, it's gonna be it's gonna be totally sketchy when it's when it starts out. Yeah. Um, and it, it came out in the news I think a few days ago that Microsoft just bought another cloud company, so. Microsoft has all this money to burn. They're just going to buy up all these cloud companies and whatnot. I'm not sure. I mean, Sony should. They, you know, another thing that came out at CES was that Sony sold 4.2 million consoles 
and that's about a million point three or a million around uh, more than than Xbox did, more than Microsoft did. So we can kind of, you know, not to dwell into the console wars, but, you know, right now PlayStation, right now Sony is kind of ahead. But there's a reason for that. I mean, Sony is, is open in more markets than Xbox One is. If you remember a long time ago, when we were t- still talking about these consoles before they were released, there was the news stories that uh, Microsoft came out that the Xbox One wouldn't work in a whole bunch of countries. I think Japan was one of them. Like, oh, sorry, it's just not going to be available. And then there were a lot of countries. Sony didn't have that problem. And Sony, is Sony available in Japan yet, or is that still coming? Do you guys know that? No. I, ironically, the Xbox One is going to launch ahead of the PS4 in Japan. Really? That's, a, that's surprising. Yeah. That's crazy. That's weird. I think by a factor of several weeks. Well, but you know, Microsoft has never really done well in Japan, and I'm not sure how much they're competing there. I mean, if I'm, weren't they not, didn't they not go to the last Tokyo Game Show at all? I think they had a small presence in, a, that they were there. They just didn't, you know, have a presentation. They didn't do anything. It's it's like it's like Romney trying to win California, just not happening. He might get some votes, but he's not taking those electorals. You know, uh, yeah. Sony has Japan in the bag. So what? We got like another million, two million right there alone. Like you know, maybe. Mm. Sony needs to come out with a mon- no. Sony. Need, Sony needs to come out with a Monster Hunter PlayStation Four. Then they'll sell. <laughs> oh God, that would sell. That's crazy. But anyway, I, would I sell metric fuck tons. I've, I've been blabbering. Well, what What are your guys' thoughts on on the PlayStation now? Service. I I like the idea. I've got a few concerns and questions about it. I mean, Throw them out pricing there. number one is the 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 biggest one. I kind of worry about. Uh, because I mean, we're already paying fifty bucks a year, or fifty or sixty bucks a year now for PlayStation Plus, which gives us multiplayer access on the PS4. Mm-hmm. Is are they implying that we're going to have to pay extra, uh, an extra subscription service to play all these old games? Well, here's the weird thing: they keep on talking about it as a subscription service. <clears throat> now, I think the reason the reason they're doing that is I think that's directed at people who have the Vita and people who are going to be playing this these things on tablets. And on TVs, TVs that are not Sony TVs. For those people, yes, a subscription service, I can see that happening. Because they need to pull them in. They need to get some market share from those people somehow. Now, the question is how it's going to affect people who already subscribe to PSN. You're right. And they haven't really talked about that yet. If they wrapped this in to PSN and said, here you go, that would be fucking insane. It would be wonderful, but I'm not sure... If that's going to be a possibility, you know, it's like like Music Unlimited is a Sony subscription service, but if you have PSN, you still have to pay extra for for Music Unlimited. Of course, it's only like yeah. five bucks a month. If they provide this subscription service <clears throat> for these games for something like five bucks a month, that's totally worth it. So it's all about the pricing structure. I mean, and people who don't have PSN have to pay more, of course, you know. But I, I happen to think I don't think. I can't see them tying this into PSN for no extra fee. It's it's going to be, they're going to have to do something. They're going to. They may have something. some like some rotating titles for free that they may. Oh they yeah, buy, they do that already. You know, yes. Only a handful, just to entice you in there, just yeah. for the the service, the guy kind of service, like they yeah you know, with PS right. Plus. Yeah. Well, but for <laughs> the most part, I think they they talked about renting games and they talked about um, uh, I guess just a subscription service for getting like, you know, sort of whole buffet style all you can eat type of service but i mean they haven't really announced any plans yet so it's just speculation at this point yeah exactly they're they're obviously still kind of working that whole thing out Um, but if i just if i can put if i can even if i can go rent a game like if there's a game i want to play you know i'm not sure i want to actually buy it uh day one it comes out and I don't find it at Redbox. I don't want to have to fucking deal with downloading a patch. Streaming it sounds like a good idea for whatever, you know, a couple bucks. Yeah. Well, I, here's the thing that I, I don't think is going to happen. I, I, I don't think they're going to allow streaming for new titles. Yeah, I think... I think yeah. they're going to take kind of a Netflix route with that 
and put like a 60, 90 day wait on actually streaming those games. They have to. If they even allow PS4 game streaming. They have to get their sales in. You know, they have to have people download full price. And honestly, if I was a developer, I wouldn't want <laughs> my game to be streamable for five bucks a month right off the bat. Because you need no, that. No, I know. Not you, unless they were doing like a premium thing. You need that first two, three, four months of sales. Because after that, it tapers off anyway. Um, uh, so, you know. But I, 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 I do think that we're going to have to pay something. And I'm, depending on how much it's going to be, I'm okay with that. But here's the thing. I mean, like, this is this is this is pretty damn big, and what's interesting to me is that Microsoft really didn't even have much of a presence at CES. I mean, they had a booth, is from what I hear, but they had no presentation or anything like that. And Chris, I think you said they were going to have some sort of investors meeting later. Yeah, in the they, week. they've got their annual investors or. Uh, Stockholders meeting, I think next week, if not the week after. But is that is that televised and all that stuff, or is that a private meeting? Uh, I don't think it's private, but I don't think they're televising it either. Yeah, see, I, I that that's interesting. That's interesting. I, I that's just interesting to me. I find that telling. I find that telling that at the beginning of a generation, when both Sony and Microsoft have new consoles out there, that at the consumer electronics show. Microsoft would basically not have anything to show off. Well, that's telling to me, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what it tells me, but it is telling me something. I mean, do you think they're still working on the the services themselves? I mean, so we know that Microsoft came out with more services, you know, right off the bat when you open the, the, yeah. the you know. And Sony has to catch up. So, yes, yeah, Sony had to be there, and they had to catch up in the services department. But, I mean, you know, I don't know. Does Microsoft have nothing else to kind of show at this point? You know, I know they're coming out with a patch for the Xbox One, an update to the OS. That's going to make some, some basic changes. But you think they well, want to show up with, with something to, to kind, of, kind of wow people a bit? I mean... I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've never thought of CES as like a you know a gamer kind of show. It's just, it's just you know electronics and latest gadgets. And yeah, stuff. I mean, most of the show was like showing off like ro- robots that would clean your. No, ground. I I know, I know that. But if I if I'm we're my, trying to infiltrate every convention, it needs to be about video games. No, but I, if I but if I'm a company that is putting yeah. out tech, yes. I mean, anytime there's a chance for me to, sh- to take out my dick and wave it around in front of the camera, I think they should do that. So, next NRA convention, we're going to see Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm not so- That would be great! If I was <laughs> working for fucking Activision... Is Activision Call of Duty? I don't even fucking remember. Activision. Yeah. yeah. If I was Activision, fuck yeah, I'd, I'd go to N- NRA conventions. I'd have booths it's set up everywhere. Audience. That's my fucking audience. That's a great <laughs> idea, Bob. That's a Just great idea. Fucking, how come they're not doing that? How come they're not doing that? I don't know. What I do know is that there have been, in, in the wake of the announcement of PlayStation Now, uh, there have there's been a resurgent of, resurgence of rumors about uh, Microsoft's own answer to that. Right. It's currently believed to be codenamed uh, Rio. Uh-huh. Uh, and back in September, there was a, uh, a blip that came on people's radar about... Uh, uh, quote, a firm that noted latency was down to 45 uh, milliseconds, which, quote, is probably okay for single-player gaming, but is pretty, uh, in fact, pretty high for real-time multiplayer gaming. You know what they say about Rio, right? They say her name Don't is... Don't go Rio. there, you'll catch a venereal disease. They say her name is Rio, and she dances on the sand, just like that river twisting through a dusty land. And when she shines, she really shows you all she can. A Rio Rio dance across the Rio Grande. Yeah, Tara, her name was Ralph. Behind me. <laughs> uh, so There's we, so many things called a Rio. Like, wasn't there like an MP3 player called a Rio? And like all these are like. There was. I actually had one of those. There was an Angry Birds Rio. Like, what? Why call it a Rio? That's so overused. People, it's, it's it's three words. It's easy to it's, sorry, three letters. Three it's, letters. Three letters. It's easy to say. 
Yeah. So, uh, so is where the latency down? Is this for their streaming service? Uh, yeah. This, again, there's. But see, that, it, it's not confirmed to be like an actual gaming streaming service, but it, it is some kind of streaming service that should be coming out in the next year or so. But I mean, that's, the that's, latency is highly dependent upon your. Yeah. How how could they make? It? Yeah. How can they make yeah, any they, they sort did, of? They didn't list like the distance from the data center what they were talking about. Yeah, they can't. How could you make any sort of claim about that? Because it, there's so many unknown factors involved. Yeah. I'm in Alaska on a satellite fucking connection. What's my latency now? It's not fucking 42. <laughs> That's right. You could you could be parked right outside the fucking data center, and it could be 45. Maybe we don't were. know. Maybe they yeah. were. Maybe they were. Is J52 drunk? Is that what I'm it's seeing in chat? Same, but... Is J52 drunk? Is that what I'm seeing in chat? Yeah, J52 yeah. drunk? I am shocked. How drunk? How, here's my question. How drunk is J52? <laughs> He's had one drink, I think, that was 8%. That's it? But 16 ounces. But on a scale so, of... Yeah, yeah that's, not, that's not bad. But on a scale of... like used to drinking, then 8% at a 16 ounce. That's pretty... Yeah, that'll get you buzzed. J52 posted no. a picture of himself on, uh, on Facebook of him uh, looking like Vanilla Ice. Ooh. Have you seen this? No, I have not. I don't feel like maybe, I, maybe I can pull it up. Maybe I can. Pull if you it really up. want to judge the the amount drunk, hold on one second. That J fifty two is drunk. You have to check him out on Twitter. Oh God! He will post quite a bit. We're we're blank right now because I'm looking something up really fast on my uh, on my uh, on my thing here. Hold on one second. I'm gonna see if I can I can get to it and race to get to it before he can get to it and put it and take it down. <laughs> uh, no, he lost. He lost. He says, "Go ahead and don't go ahead and show it. I don't care." Oh, okay. Well, that's what we'll do then. Here we go. Let's see. Add. I don't know if you can find it because his, his uh, profile is private. No, me, me, and me, and uh, me and him are buds. Yeah, but you're great buds. Post a picture that's on a private profile. So there he is. There's there's J52 in his. Uh, this is what he posted earlier. Him and his vanilla ice. Oh, his vanilla ice right. look. Isn't that nice? Screen. This is the guy who does all our highlights here at Four Player Network. He's uh, he's cool as ice, as you can see. I think if you are willing to sacrifice our love, what I want to see everyone do is uh, what I would love. <laughs> if everyone can and can just print screen on their computer right now, and make this the icon for their form account, uh, that would that would love that. We have, uh, you know, tens of J52s <laughs> on the forum. It's amazing. It'd be really good. So, anyway, anyway oh, jeez, I hit the hit the button. Well, it's too bad, you know, he's not you know, like, nude from the, the waist up. He could do a, a night to remember. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. Just by ice. Vanilla ice. <sighs> All right. So, so was there anything else at CES that we were interested in? Uh, besides steam boxes. Some... They announced that. Oh, the steam, steam boxes. boxes. I... I still can't get excited about the steam boxes. I really can't. And they're and all the prices they're showing off are too fucking expensive. Too expensive. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much what you get. We we're pretty much predicting was they're going to be pretty expensive. Uh, and like I would probably grab a Steam Box controller because that thing looks baller. Yeah. Yeah. But but um, nothing else. That, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, if if I could find, if I get a, like a cheap little Steam box to throw underneath underneath my TV and stream, then that might be an option for me. Well, like Jessica, for less than a hundred dollars. Uh, Jessica Con, uh, Condit uh, from Joystick uh, wrote a pretty good piece about the Steam box and how you know the, the term Steam box is kind of nonsense because it's basically what's basically happening is, and it's kind of brilliant on Valve's part. Is that they're basically just licensing the name Steambox to all of these independent third-party hardware manufacturers who are just making these things and buying the name Steambox from Valve. Like Valve isn't losing yeah. anything if these things don't sell. All they're doing is selling. The, like this is kind of brilliant. Valve isn't really producing anything. Like they produce the Steam OS, 
But that's it. They're not producing any and hardware. The and the controller. But they're not they're not making the controller themselves, I don't think. That's probably out there too. I mean Yeah, they they they're they'll have like a sanctioned um valve steam controller, but then be other people can manufacture it if they want. Yeah. But I mean as for the boxes, the really expensive part of it, all they're doing is they're literally selling the name Steambox to companies like Alienware and I Buy Power yep. who are then trying to use that name to sell their systems. It's kind of yep. it's kind of brilliant on Valve's part and kind of almost like a little shitty, but not really. <laughs> it's like it's vaguely shitty, but it's a brilliant idea. And I kind of understand why they're doing it. But they, they know how... The thing is that it's so smart because they know how much risk is involved. And by doing it this oh, way... Absolutely. By doing it this way, they pretty much abscond themselves from 90% of that risk. So. Yeah, I think it's... it's um it's There is a market for it, but it's a very niche enthusiast market. I think they were saying there's only like maybe 250 games available right now. Well, they're Linux games, so they have to be they have yeah, to be Linux. They have to be Linux right? games, they have to be compiled from Linux. But I mean, when I looked at my library, more than, almost half of it was compiled for Linux, which is kind of a uh, kind of, you know, amazing cuz I just was I, I was surprised by that number of yeah. how many people actually compiled for Linux. But yeah. given the popularity of engines that are cross-platform, that's I guess less surprising than it should be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. Again, it's these boxes that are basically PCs, and they're not really standardized hardware, so they can't really get the benefits of something like a console. Uh, it's mostly it's just the people that want to um, have you know this this little Linux box in their living room. Right. That's running Ubuntu. I don't know. Like I could I could build my own Steam box if I wanted to, and that's kind of nice i have that option well everyone can buy anyone can buy can, can make their own steam box you take the computer yep. you have now format it put the steam os yep. on it and you're done you have your you have your make steam, sure there it is. you have an nvidia card though oh is that is that when it has to be nvidia card is that what it is because NVIDIA recently open sourced their driver, hmm. their graphics driver. Oh, Traditionally, the graphics drivers have been closed sourced. Right. Uh, so they are, they, they, you got them updates sporadically. Sometimes right. they work, sometimes they didn't. Uh, but I think NVIDIA recently, I'm pretty damn sure it's NVIDIA that open sourced their um, graphics driver. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm just going to Google this real quick to make sure I'm not. While, while yeah. you're googling that real fast, yeah, I want to say helping, at least they're helping on the uh, the open source driver. Yeah, uh, and that's that's that is uh, that allows much better performance because people that are working on Linux and know Linux, you know, in and out, they mm -hmm. can improve these drivers to make them fucking efficient, yeah. like really fucking efficient. Well, look how we say op open uh, a source lot better than like a Windows because you can yeah. you can just strip parts out of, on a Linux operating system. You can streamline these operating systems like crazy. Right. Which is why you're able to get such great performance out of these fucking boxes, out of this OS, is because yeah. you can just remove everything you do not need. Yeah. There's no nothing that you don't install unless you want it. Nothing's going to get in the way, basically. No, no. So you're, you're never going to have anything that's a resource hog. And you can get straight, you know, if you really wanted to, you can have... Uh, Real low level access to the hardware and get it get that much faster um, response out of it. So it's it's a rare scenario when that actually comes together and people actually make shit that works that well on a on a Linux box. But it'll, if when it happens, it runs better than on a PC. Right. But it's I, that is that is the exception. That is not the rule. Yeah. So that obviously ATI cards not really supported. I think they're they're kind of supported. They're not going to be running as good as like a if you have an Nvidia card in or um, well, like, CMOS. Like I always say, I mean, open source is just uh, better all around. You know, you have to open this stuff. It's it's crowdsourcing is just it's it's the better in different ways. It's the way of the future. Yeah, it, it can it um it can be better if you have an active community that's really dedicated to it. Well, yeah, if you don't, of course. It's not going to get improved. But you know, you're always going to have something like that. I mean, there's always going to be hobbyists who will just want to try something out. You know? Yeah. 
And with anything, I mean, NASA is open sourcing stuff now. You know, we we haven't figured out this quantum theory again. Here it is. If you can figure it out, let us know. It's just it's just the way it goes. I it, I think I think that, I think just uh, we as a society work better if we're all kind of pulling together because it's the whole thing, the idea of a village. You know, like one person can't make can't invent and make a car, but a society can pretty easily over time. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that that's a little bit like how science is run. I mean, people publish journals and publish in journals. They publish studies in journals. They publish their results. They publish their methods. They publish everything. Mm-hmm. So you can reproduce it if you want. Real quick, you have to click on the the the, the GIF that Zarls just put into uh, oh, Jesus. just put into chat. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Oh, it's fast. <laughs> it's really fast. Our community works <laughs> wonderfully fast. It's probably like some gift generator for that. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm sure. <laughs> probably. The, the, uh, the, you know, I, I really do. I, I really do like like the uh, like that picture J52 because if you meet J52 in person, he's actually quite reserved and very very quiet. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a bit of a wallflower, and I like I like that picture of him because it really shows his his personality, the inner. The inner J fifty two is sort of coming out, and I like that. Basically, I'm saying that I think J fifty two needs to drink more. <laughs> so your, your goal next time you see him is just to load him with drinks and keep. Him I think that I think that's what I have to do. I think I just need to keep nah. plying Jeremy with drinks the next time I see him, and then when he is stumbling, vomiting on himself drunk, I just push him onto the bus. Back to Eugene, <laughs> because there's nothing better than being drunk on a Greyhound bus. I'll tell you. Oh God! I mean that facetiously, of course. Of course. Um, it's 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 worse when the Greyhound they has a bathroom, it has a toilet. They do, they do. But it's out of service and it's closed. You can't yeah. go in there. Last time I was on a Greyhound bus, I was going to Oregon. And the entire first half of the trip, there was a meth head tweaker vomiting in the bathroom. And I was two rows in front of the restroom, and I could hear him the whole time retching violently. It sounded like his, uh, like, like he, he, his eyeballs, like every blood vessel in his eyeballs were going to burst is how violent he, he was Did he do the thing where he kind of somewhat screams while he vomits? Not really. He was more like... Ah! <laughs> like that kind of thing? Yeah, that's kind of what he did. Yeah, he's, like, he's screaming out of his stomach. Yeah, screaming out of his stomach. And then we get to the stop where he was, and I don't remember the town it was, but it was sort of some random town in between Seattle and Portland. And he stumbled off the bus, and he took off his shirt, and he threw his shirt in a bush, and he just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I don't think his shirt was even dirty. I just think, I think when you're on meth, clothes just sort of come off you don't you don't want them on you know mm-hmm. it makes your skin it makes it so t- does tara know from experience what does it do it makes your skin what oh tara's tara describing it. It, it i guess it makes your skin ultra sensitive and it feels like anything kind of touching your skin feels like needles or oh paper. sort of like like yeah. oh but sort, sort of like like ecstasy but the opposite way like painful yeah it's like it's like a bad good. ecstasy oh that's wonderful well more yes. people should do it i guess Ugh. all right Ugh. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. It is 9 o'clock. And when we come back, we might actually talk about some video games. Maybe. Maybe. Eh, okay. We'll see. I forgot this is a video game show. I know, it's crazy. Anyway, you're all watching Cocktail Time Live here at 4 Network.com, and we'll be right back.
Henry. Everybody, welcome back. Oh, Rave Party. Rave Party with J52. Want to thank everybody for watching us live here at 4 Player Network. 4PP.TV. We do uh, Cocktail Time, which is the podcast tonight, every Friday night at 8 p.m. It used to be Sunday, and I decided Sunday sucks to do this, and now here we are on Friday nights. So I want to thank everybody who's come out and watch us live. I do love it when you guys watch us live. Especially want to do a big thank you to our subscribers, people like Toastcast, people like Chai Tai 805 people like Skywalker94. Our subscribers really help us to... Keep the lights on and the doors open here at 4Player Network. And if you feel like subscribing, if you like the things we do here, if you like our podcast, if you like our broadcast, if you like our website, if you like our videos, all that kind of good stuff, we do that ask that you think about subscribing. It is $4.99 a month over at Twitch TV. And for that, you get no ads on the broadcast. You get no ads on the website. You get exclusive access to our top fives and dinner times. You get early access to a bunch of our videos, like our reviews and our end-of-year videos and all that kind of good stuff. It's it's really worth it. It, would, it Mostly, it really kind of helps us out. But if you can subscribe, we totally understand. We thank you for coming out and watching us. Uh, you just being here means a lot to me and everybody. Uh, it feels good to talk to chat and see a lot of people in uh if you want to just add us on uh, subscribe to us on youtube share our videos and all that kind of good stuff that stuff kind of helps too all right so video games video games video games video games video games i guess we just talk about video games what have you guys been playing i've been playing don't starve i know i'm kind of late to the party on this because people have been playing it for a while. Excuse it's me. okay. I still haven't played it. It's good. You know what? It's it's it it's it follows the the Minecraft model without. Well, it's not true. I did I did play it. Yeah, I played it in twenty twelve. Jesus, I'm behind. Yeah, at PAX when they oh. first showed it off to the public. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's a. Uh, it follows the Minecraft model without like a lot of the building and stuff, but about the basically the survival kind of stuff. And it's got a great sort of drawn Tim Burton aesthetic, which I kind of I kind of really like. Um, but it's not it doesn't do it it doesn't overblow it. You know, it has a really good art style. Um, you're basically plopped into this world, and you have to survive. You have to not starve. You have to collect wood. You have to find food. You have to find enough stuff to build a fire. Find other things to build a bigger fire. Uh, if you build a bigger fire, that does more stuff. You find food. If you cook it, you know you can eat it raw, but if you want to cook it, you can cook it, and it gives you more health, and it fills up your, your stomach meter, which keeps you from starving more. Um, food also rots, and if you cook it, it rots slower. It's like, like a lot of little things. And there's so many little things. Like I'm, I'm still working my way through it. I've been playing it for about four days, three or four days. And the longest I've survived has been 17 days. And I had a nice little camp going, and I had two little farms, and I was doing really well, and I was exploring. And it, it, basically, you set up your little camp, and then you have to start pushing out. Because as you use up resources, you can use up resources. So if you have little bunnies, you can make little traps if you find enough, like, twigs and then make rope and stuff you can make little traps but if you get all if you eat up all the bunnies like they're gone so you have to sort of push out you know you can kind of like, like use up nature as you're there and as i was pushing out i ended up like like taking an egg from a nest and i didn't realize the monster was kind of like nearby and the fucking thing chased me all the way back to my camp and i tried to kill it and it killed me and i was i was dead oh. you know was it like a gigantic Stick eyeball, eye with yeah, huge legs. Yeah, it was the eyeball thing. It was the eyeball oh, thing. I, I saw uh, I saw Chris do a broadcast one time, and he, it chased him all over the goddamn map. <laughs> he eventually just quit the game because he couldn't do shit about it. No, if you if you take their egg, uh, they'll chase you everywhere until you kill them. Basically, 
they get very angry. But I mean, there's lots of different types of animals. There's frogs. There's there's bunny rabbits. There's birds, and then there's monsters, and everything drops resources. And you know, you have basically three different meters. You have your starvation meter, you have your health meter, and you have your sanity meter. So I was getting so sanity. Your sanity kind of goes down. Like at night, and I think if you're starving, it goes down faster. And if you start going insane, you'll start seeing things. You'll start seeing monsters. Like the whole screen will start getting a little weird. And you'll start, as a player, you'll start seeing things like in the corner of the screen. Like, oh, what the fuck was that? Oh, no, it's gone. What was that? What was that? And if you go totally insane, like even animals like bunny rabbits and stuff will turn into monsters and they'll try to kill you. It's basically what happens. So you have to sort of control your sanity meter. And you can gain sanity by picking flowers, which is kind of a cool way to do it. Of course, if you, if you pick all the flowers, then the butterflies don't really come around. And if the butterflies, if you kill the butterflies and eat their wings, that's a really good source to get health back. So it's sort of a catch-22. You can also get enough flowers to build like a, to make like a garland headdress sort of thing, and that makes you basically not go as crazy as fast because you're pretty. And as we know, pretty people are never insane. <laughs> but I, I'm really enjoying it. I, it, I, I, I you know, I, I, I died on my 17th day, and now I unlocked the female character. Um, so there's multiple characters you can play this game with, and each have their own benefits and whatnot. And uh, wait, who's who's drinking Mike's hard lemonade? Somebody drinking Mike's hard. Tara is drinking Mike's hard. There's, there's Tara. Oh, she, Tara. There's she Tara. Was drinking. It's Mike's harder lemonade. It's eight percent. Oh. I was, I was wondering if Tara was aware that Mike's Hard Lemonade is the alcohol of pedophiles everywhere. Yeah, I think we talked about this like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, because I, I was watching a lot of uh, uh, To Catch a Predator. To Catch a Predator. To catch, I was yeah. watching a lot of To Catch a Predator. <laughs> like, like, I was going on To Catch a Predator marathons, and these guys always showed up with like condoms and Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> you got to give it to them. At least they were thinking about the condoms. Well, if you want to get a 13-year-old child uh, drunk and not pregnant, that's kind of your magical recipe. Condoms yeah. and Mike's Hard Lemonade. You gotta at least have some level of standard. Some <laughs> levels of standard. Mike's Harder Lemonade. That's you know that's the 16 to 16, you know 15 to 16 year olds. The 12 to 14, you, you stay with the, the regular Mike's Hard Lemonade. They're gonna fall asleep before you even get through half of it. I know, and you know it's not <laughs> fun if they're not pushing back at least a little bit. Anyway, oh, God. anyway sorry. It's terrible. It's I need a shower now. I know. I think I'm on oh. a. I think I'm on a list somewhere now. <laughs> Probably after that. Oh. Anyway, don't starve. Um, so by by surviving 17 days, I, I amassed enough experience that I unlocked the the female character, and uh, she has an immunity to fire, and she has a lighter, and she can light anything on fire with the lighter, and she can also use it as a torch at night. So oh, I forgot. So there's you know there's a day and night cycle. There's a day, and then there's a a evening, and then there's a, a nighttime. The nighttime is pretty short, but the nighttime is totally scary. scary. And you need to stay by your fire because I haven't I haven't tried this yet. But if you go out into the night, like things will start coming at you, and I don't know what these things are yet because I haven't stayed out in the darkness enough. It's to a grew. is it a guru that comes at you? I don't know. There's there's tons of gurus. Well, I know that that if you're at your camp and night comes, so there's also moon phases, and different things happen during the moon phases, and during the full moon during one of my playthroughs, I got attacked by wolves. But these world mutated wolves, which was kind of scary. I survived. I did survive that. But there's so many little mechanics and systems with this game, you know, right? All the way from everything dropping some sort of a resource to resources being depleted to you being able to, you know, replenish resources. So every time you cut down a tree, you'll get a pine cone, one or two pine cones, and you can plant those to make more trees. But if you plant too many trees in one area, you can't plant there anymore. Which makes sense because you'll use up all the soil and the roots are still there. You're not getting the roots up. You're just chopping down the tree. So it makes sense you wouldn't be able to keep on planting in the same spot. Down to you know monsters changing or getting more dangerous at night. Down to the, moons, the moon phases affecting things. Down to there's weather systems. So if it rains, plants will grow faster. There's so many little things that are going on that you kind of have to keep track of or that are just kind of happening. It's, it's really kind of amazing. 
And yeah, it's a game. It's a game of systems. I remember when yeah. I was talking to the uh, developer. At, um, it must have been PAX East twenty fifteen or twenty twelve. Uh, not 15, what the fuck am I thinking? Uh, yeah, 2012? 2011? 2011. It might have been 2011. Yeah, yeah, no, it was... It was you know, no, no, I don't know. It doesn't uh, matter. When they, they were first showing up, this is the first time they're showing off to the public, and everybody's, you know, that's sitting there playing it, they're, like, they're enthralled with it, saying, like, oh, you should do this thing, you should do this thing, and the developer's like, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's an interesting thing, maybe we should fucking do that. And they were talking about... Uh, someone was suggested like maybe you should actually go sleep and then you wake up like but you're actually still dreaming and then you're playing while you're dreaming and it's like all oh, this weird stuff and the developer's oh, like yeah maybe no yeah. no there, there's there's weird like the thing is about this is that it's it's the really good thing and the really frustrating about this game is it's equally good and equally frustrating and because of that I'm okay with it because of the setting is that nothing is really explained like very few things are really explained well and I I get that and that's okay. And it makes her like really strange things happening. Like I was, I was, I was going through, and I'm like, oh, there's a plant. I'll pick it because I need to amass food. And it came out, and it was a plant, and it was like a little dude. The plant was a little dude, and I was like, okay. So I took the little dude. <clears throat> what? And it was a plant. That's with, weird. It was a plant with a face, right? So I, I put it in my pocket in my bag. And I'm like, okay, you know. So I go back to camp, and I go, okay, here's this little dude. It's a plant. I guess I need to cook it. And I cook it or eat it. I remember I cooked it or eat it. I might have ate it. I don't remember I cooked it or eat it. Ate it. But I either cooked or ate this little dude. And then I fell asleep. And I woke up a day later. And things were kind of weird. Like some animals were kind of asleep around me. And I was able just to kill them. But other things were running around. Like I fell asleep for a whole day. And I don't know what happened during that time. I still don't know what happened during that time. And I had never seen these little dudes before. I had played for like nine hours, and I saw these little dudes, and I was like, oh. it was a mandrake. Toast cast, toast cast has it. Ah. It was a mandrake. It was a little dude. It was a dude with a face. Maybe, maybe they yeah, know. You, you know about the mandrake root, right? No, what, what about the mandrake root? So the mandrake is a... Medicinal? It's, I guess it's, it's a plant that was trying to be human. So the roots look like people. Right. Like a, like a person. Okay. They're supposed to be like have medicinal powers or some bullshit like that. Well, it's, it's some mythology bullshit. Uh, Big Baz, I ate. I ate him. Was I not supposed to eat the little dude? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I ate yeah, them. I, I ate. I ate two of them because I I fell asleep and I was like, "What was that?" And so I did it again. I was see hungry what, again. I <laughs> ate another one. <laughs> I wanted to see what would happen, and I, I couldn't get my my mind around. You know. What what actually? And I woke up, my pants were unbuttoned, and I don't know what 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 went on. But anyway, there's all these little systems and stuff, and you go into these menus of all the things you can craft, and you know things just kind of aren't explained. So you have to kind of go out and explore and experience this world. And I I like I like games that do that. I like that games that uh, Smiley is telling me don't eat the mandrakes. They're super rare. Well, I ate two of them. I didn't know how rare they were. They were they were two right Oops. next to each other. <laughs> oh well. Um, I like games that sort of tell the narrative through the world, and I've made this. I've talked about this before, but it's sort of like it's sort of like 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 Dark Souls or Demon Souls. You know that kind of like you're not told anything about this world. You have to go out and explore it, and through the act of exploring and finding items and reading the descriptions and just looking around, you slowly learn about this world. And that's what Don't Starve is. It's about being put in this alien world, and you have to slowly. Um, I have to slowly explore it to discover its story, and I enjoy that. I, I don't, I don't always like it when narratives are spoon fed to me, and way too yeah. many games spoon feed the narratives. You know, oh, you are a good man. You can tell because you have shiny gun. Oh, there is bad person with accent. You must kill bad person with accent. Oh, you feel bad about killing, but you must do it for America. It's like, it's like, oh my God, it's so boring. You get five good man points. Mm -hmm. What? Exactly. What does that even mean? I know. You know, but but this game does it subtly, and I like that. And games like, you know, like I said, games like Dark Souls and Demon Souls do that sort of thing exceptionally well, and I, I enjoy that. So I'm enjoying... And don't starve. I'm not just enjoying the mechanics of playing the game. I'm I'm enjoying this world, the process of this world slowly opening itself up to me. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of um, 
a lot of a uh, one of my first games that I wrote uh, was a mud. I actually have my own mud. I should really put that online at some point. Uh, where the game started getting really complex to the point where like you wander around in a world uh, and you can go standard RPG shit where you kill things, you level up. But then there's a lot of systems at play. Um, there were um, there was weather, like kind of a regional based weather where clouds and storm systems would move through the different regions and they would affect um, respawn rates of different plants. Uh, there would be uh, campfires, you'd create campfires and depending on uh, the region you were in, certain uh, NPCs or enemies were t- attracted to the fire, looking for food or they were scared away by the fire. Uh, and you could also sleep. There's a whole dreaming system I wrote where um, depending on if you were just kind of just sleeping in general or if, uh, if you were on a specific quest, you could get dreams related to those quests. Like it was Really, really deep and really weird for a text-based adventure game, and, and very way too ambitious. But I ended up like writing some of these systems uh, in in just a text-based game. And I, God, I should really should pull that out again. It's it's somewhere, God, somewhere I, I have it. I should totally just throw it up on my uh, my dev server so people can actually go check it out. Right. But it's it's that same idea where you have a, a world. You have a world that has there's these diff, different rules to it. There's different systems in place. You need to figure out what those different things mean. You can find cues, you know, some other uh, visual or audio cue to figure out um, what type of things happening and how to be able to exploit that to your own uh, advantage. Especially you know when you're trying to when you have some goal like other I, I want to survive or, or be able to build this thing or get this type of resource, you can figure that out based on what kind of things are happening in the game. Yeah. And those are like really become quite popular recently. I'm not too terribly surprised. Well, well definitely more popular between, you know, for It's, for it's like almost a resurgence of that genre. Yeah, and I, I want to see more of that in AAA games, and I, I think one of the issues is, and we, I've talked about, I've, I've you know, harped on this before, is that <clears throat> and I, I, I actually don't really blame Developers so much, but I blame I blame publishers. It, are they're so afraid that a gamer might pick up their game and not get it, or get lost, or not see that thing they were supposed to see, that they sort of handhold the gamer so much. And I, I can kind of right. understand it. Like I, I do kind of understand it. Like since we've been sort of developing the game we're developing, um, and watching people play it, you know, I, I do get it that you spend a lot of time on something. And then you watch gamers sort of blow through it, and it's like, yeah. oh god damn it! Like, I spent so much time on that. Can, can you just like when I play this game, I look at that thing a lot because I made it, and you're just yeah, blow- totally. you're just you're just blowing through it like it's nothing. Like, oh my god, <laughs> why did I, I spend like the, why did I spend so much asset, time on that? Like you- you put in the game the first asset. You spend like a good fucking week on this thing, mm-hmm. and most people see maybe see this asset, this this one model for about five seconds, and then never see it again. <laughs> no, and I spent so much awesome. time, and it was like two or three redesigns and all this kind of stuff. And it's like I sort of always just sit there and look at it because I made it. So I'm like, okay, how does that look? Maybe I can change that. Maybe I should adjust that little part. I don't know if that looks right. And then I watch other people play, and they're just like, eh, and then just go by, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, let me. Be, I'm, I want to see. I'm gonna count how because we had Nolan recently play test through our game. I want right. to see how long he actually <laughs> spent. Where that one model? How long on it stays? Screen. How long me, it stays on screen? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see this. And they know that's. Like, I'm pretty sure it's pretty short. And that's something you learn. Got his playthrough down to 22 minutes, so I don't think very long. Yeah, if that's something you sort yeah. of learn through development. Is that people kind of blow through stuff, and you sort of learn where your details need to go. You know, if you, if you, and I, I do this a lot in games now. We're kind of going off track, but I mean, I do this a lot in games now since we've been developing a game. I will play Battlefield 4 and I will stop in the middle of things and start looking at textures and really looking at models. And I'm going, wow, like, this is kind of shitty. Like, this texture does not, ma- like, doesn't add up at all. Like, it just doesn't match up. This is a next gen title. I'm surprised this happened. Like, how does this happen? Well, it happens because no one's looking at that fucking rock like I'm looking at it. People are running by and yeah. shooting dudes. So they don't spend the time on that because it's just not worth it, you know? So you, 11 you, seconds. <laughs> 11 seconds. 11 seconds. Compared to how much development time went into that. And chances are he looked at it for probably three seconds. Right, and then he was looking forward at the, at the crates and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah. But it's like um, one of those things like where you're you just can't predict it. Like he played the entire demo without killing any NPCs. No, you're right. He didn't kill anything. He did. He didn't he didn't realize he could kill any NPCs. <laughs> That's like one of those things where like I just kind of expected people to try. I think actually Jeff was the same thing, like where mm-hmm. Jeff is, is is there with us making this game, and it took about two months or three months for him to figure out he ac- he could actually <laughs> kill some of these NPCs. Like, like the, that you could use the slam as a an offensive weapon, not just uh, get through things. And exactly, like, uh, there's certain yeah certain abilities you pick up and you don't realize that there's actually an offensive value to this ability. It's not just to to traverse the terrain. You can actually use this in an offensive way. But oh, uh, it's funny. Yeah, we're getting uh, more off track. You learn. It's it's a lot of a lot of design stuff that you don't think of, that you think very like a lot of times when I'm I'm going through the design stuff, I'll think of specific scenarios of how this thing can be used. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people don't think of, like when they see this. Uh, this design or this mechanic or something, they don't think about it, that one scenario I thought of. They think about something else entirely. Right. And I look back and I go, of course they think of that. What the fuck was I thinking originally when I was making that? It's such a, it's such a trial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Don't Starve. We're talking about Don't Starve. We started talking about our own yeah. game. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, I'm really enjoying Don't Starve. I, I, I'm looking forward to getting into it. I, You know, one thing I'm, I'm really doing is I'm, I'm trying to avoid the the temptation to look things up online. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I kind of want to learn things as I go, and if I have to die, I'll die. But I, I don't want to just, you know, find the chart of things I need and where I need to go. I, I want the game to sort of open itself up to me naturally. So I, I, I specifically have not, not been looking things up. Like, for instance, I, um, I was having a really hard time figuring out how to use the traps because... For a lot of other stuff, you can you can interact with in the world. So, like, say pine cones, right? To make the pine cone interact the, with the world to make a tree, there's an option called place, right? And when you hit place, it turns into either a red or a green silhouette. And green, of course, is where you can place it, and red is where you can't. With traps, there is no place option, and it was really it was just drops. So you can drop any item anywhere, right? And sometimes you have to because you can get overloaded with with in, with your inventory. There is right. no there is no place option for the trap. Just drop. And I was like, I don't want to drop it. I want to place it. Like to me, that's a totally different thing, you know. Right. But what I realized is, <clears throat> you you have to drop. You do have to drop the trap, and you can drop it anywhere. <clears throat> and then when you uh, when you you hover when you choose uh, a food item, carrots or berries or whatever, a new option for that shows up when you're near the trap that says bait. So you don't place the trap, you drop it and you bait it. Hmm. Which totally threw me off. You know, that so throw me off too. <clears throat> yes, I spent two days going, I want to place the trap, I don't want to drop it, what am I doing wrong? And then I figured, I kind of figured it out, now I know how to use traps. But it was, it was, it was definitely, you know, something I had to learn with the game. But I, I, I would call that more of a, more of a bug than anything. Yeah, it seems like if you're if you're used to being able to interact with an item in order to, well, it's, that's the tricky thing is that you want to be able to if you placed it, then you think the trap would actually work and you wouldn't have to bait it. Uh, but if you drop it, I mean, there, there's there's yeah, there's very few ways you can actually. I guess if you if you placed it and then you can have another dialogue pop up for like what bait you want, want to use for it. That might be a good option, but again, I think it's kind of like a it, UI choice. It should have said uh, place. Choice. It should have, a place should have come up, I think, is what Yeah, I mean, they, there should have been a better option that's much more obvious as what you're trying to do. But, like, because, like, right now, whenever you. What, my, my assumption is when you drop something, you can go pick it back up. Like, it's just it's just on the ground. It's not doing anything. It's inert. It's in, it's, oh, so, you know, traps you can always pick up whenever you want, but I, I like your word inert. Like, it's not act doesn't out does not actually have a function when you drop. It has it. no it has no effect on the world. It's just inert. It's sitting there. You can go pick it back up. And it's right. Doing nothing. When you when you put a trap down, you don't just drop it. You have to place it. You have to set it up. There is an there is a yeah. physical action of setting it up. So a place would would make sense. But anyway, that, right. That, but you know what's weird is that I, I watched some videos, <clears throat> and in the PC version there is a place option, and that's what they're. Oh off really? As well. Oh, it's, so it's just a porting issue. It's just a porting issue. Oh, that makes a lot more sense now. So it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Anyway, that that's basically what I what I've been playing this week. That's kind of my 
what I did this week, besides a little bit of Battlefield, because last weekend was double XP for Battlefield 4, so I just, you know, played a lot of Operation Locker and, 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 and sucked that shit like a giant black cock that hadn't been milked in a month, you know? But other than that, that's what I've been doing. How about you guys? What have you guys been playing? Who wants to go first? Who's got something? Give me some love. Give me some sugar. Come on. I've actually been playing something. What have you been playing? But if Chris has something else he wants to talk about... Chris has I've been, been, Chris has been kind of quiet. Game of the Year stuff. I haven't had any time to play games. <laughs> Good, because you can actually you can contribute to what I actually have been playing. Okay. I've been playing one thing this last week. All right. And it's a sequel to a game I recently beat. It's Mass Effect 3. Hot damn! Good man. <laughs> Finally. Chris loves game. Chris loves his Mass Effect 3. I uh, yes, I do. Yeah, yes, yes. Now I finally understand like what you were talking about previously about all this customization bullshit for weapons and all that. It's it's a lot better this time around. Yeah, like I think um combat wise it's an it's an definitely an evolution on uh two. Like combat wise, it's definitely better than two. The evolution. Yeah, and your AI, your AI partners, they're actually fucking smart this time around. They They'll do cool. what you tell them to do. Yeah, it's it's definitely they've they've upgraded the combat a bit. Um, uh, I still haven't. I've gotten through some story missions. Like for me, it's really linear at this point. Like I've gotten to the point where it's like it's starting to open up stuff, but it seems like I can't travel to areas unless I have a reason to be there. Like yeah, it, 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 it progressively opens up like the, the first two games. Uh, but they actually, they, they kind of stress on you the importance of side missions and just being careful when you're exploring uh, yeah. by having the, uh, the Reapers start hunting you down. Yeah, yeah. It seems, it, there's definitely that restriction there where I feel like uh, it doesn't feel like it can just go waltz around the universe for a while going and doing some dude's side mission because he... You know, he wants to be able to collect some information on some other dude. Like it's no, it's mostly all directly related to the War of the Reapers. So it's it, it's got a much more focused um, uh, uh, intent for the for at least the content so far that I've been been experiencing. So it all has at least a purpose to the to the overarching war. Um, and I haven't I haven't been playing it too much. Um, I got reintroduced to Garrus. He popped back up again. So um, that was a nice little surprise. It was a good mission too. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I finished that um, relatively recently, like today. Uh, but it's yeah, it's uh, I, I've only probably maybe played three hours of it tops, maybe two. Okay. So I'm pretty. Yeah, you've got about another. If you play all the side quests, you're looking at another twenty five, twenty eight hours. Uh, how much time did I put into the second one? I can't remember the first one. Oh shit, Tara's on my account. God damn it, Tara. Uh, I probably put maybe 20 something in the fir- in the second game, uh, less than the first one. I blow through the, just fucking blew through the first one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll get through it. I've got, I've been looking through and I have so many games I want to play and finish. Uh, I'm still working through the Witcher Enhanced Edition. I have Witcher 2, you know, uh, on, GOG, I need to go install it and download it. Uh, uh, I'm just thinking, like, I've only got three weeks of work left. Like, I'm, I'm out after three weeks. Like, three weeks from today. And uh, I've been so damn busy. Like, I've I only got to play maybe an hour or two of Mass Effect 2 this week. I haven't even played anything else. I'm just hoping, like, which is probably not going to happen. Is I'm going to have more time to play games when I actually quit my job. You've been you've been training somebody. What you said. Yeah, is this he, week I was training someone to replace me. Is he ready? Do you, are you doing a good job, or is it? Yeah, no, he's 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 very competent. He, he could take over and like now if if like just ditched, he could figure it out. I say it was like, like, or if it was like the, that Civil War movie where they they trained the black soldiers badly with Matthew Broderick. They <laughs> purposely trained him badly. What? Yes, you never saw that movie. No, you never saw Glory. No. Glory is great. 
Oh no, I've seen Glory. What? I've heard That's of Glory. Glory. I just yeah. never seen it. So, so Glory at the beginning. Of, so in Glory. They have a black uh, regiment, African American regiment. Oh, you're right. Yeah, and they they're they're training them just badly because they don't give a shit about them and they don't think they're able to do the do be good and they soldiers move to like the front lines and bullshit. Well, no, then Matthew Broderick comes in oh. and he says, you know, you need to train them well, and uh, and then at the end they end up like they need soldiers for a suicide mission and they up all, end up all volunteering and they they go and they they you know that kind of thing. It's a great movie. But it, it, I remember that whole scene. There's a great, there's a great, great scene where, you know, the, the generals aren't aren't is not treating the unit, you know, is, is not taking the unit seriously, not tra- training them well, and Matthew Broderick character is a up, upper general, higher general, and comes and wants to inspect the troops, and he goes, you know, he goes, let me see how he goes to one of them, and I forget who it was, and he's like, let, let me see how you shoot, and he's not a bad shot, and then he's like. He's watching the guy reload, and of course it's fucking Civil War muskets, so it's like you have to like yeah. take out all the powder and then do the thing and then put the put the, the the powder in and do it. And the guy's like really, really slow. And he's like, you know, why are you so slow reloading? Like what you know, basically and he, he says he asks another general for his his pistol. And then as the guy's reload trying to reload, he starts shooting the pistol in the air next to his head to sort of yeah. simulate you know, warlike conditions, and the the guy can't do it. He's totally rattled by the process. And then he tells the generals, he's like, you know, train them properly. Like, basically, you guys have just been fucking with these guys. You need to train them well. And then they go, and they... It's a great, great movie. It's one of, one of, one of my... It's probably in my top ten movies of all time. Yeah, I remember watching it um, back in... Oh, my God, how was this? 1997... Is that Six, when that, is that seven. when is that when Glory came out? Yeah, I watched this in fucking like middle school. <laughs> oh jeez, yeah. Wait, you were yeah. in middle school, ninety six? Yeah. I'm not. Am I that much older than you? I guess so. uh, 1989 is when Glory came out. Oh, okay. I was in I was in elementary school. In okay. 89. Yeah, no, no, no. 89. I was thinking of like 90. <laughs> I actually saw it in like 96, 97. When we were doing a bunch of our Civil War study. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's an old why movie. I saw it then. Not, that's not when it came out. It's an old movie. It was yeah, like it was yeah. like it was. So basically, this was like Matthew Broderick's breakout role when he was still like the child star, you know, Bueller, Ferris Bueller days off kind of guy. Yeah. And he was trying yeah. he was trying to break out of that 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 t- those types of roles. And so he was in glory and he had like this Colonel Mustard mustache, like this this Kentucky fried chicken, the Colonel mustache, and he, he and he looked kind of ridiculous. Cuz he still has such a had such a baby face, you know. And he had this giant big old handlebar mustache. Yeah, it's a but a great the, movie. Um, Matt, I said it was a great movie. I, I I remember it because the only scene I remember from that movie was when they had the cannons going off and they shot through a guy's leg. I remember. I don't remember shooting through a guy's leg. I remember one guy getting his head blown off with a cannon. There's, I think there, there's decapitation. There's definitely one guy that had a cannonball that was kind of rolling on the ground towards them, and they just kind of. I kinda, think like, you're thinking of that. I think you're thinking of that Mel Gibson Revolutionary War movie. Uh, you mean uh, Braveheart? No. Uh, <laughs> it's Braveheart. It's Bra- of- no, it's no, Braveheart. When they were when when the the the, Celt, the Celts were shooting the cannons at the English, at the English during, right? No, they were shooting this. at the Jews, right? It was uh, no, it was and then and then Mel Gibson. He goes, I hate no. the Jews. It, it was, uh, it was the Patriot. Oh, that was the no, 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 no. no, no, no. no. no you're the thinking, Patriot was way later. You're thinking, yeah, I know, but no, you're thinking of that the scene is in there. You're thinking of the movie with the the letter carriers during the apocalypse. The, the postman. The postman. You're thinking of the postman. That's no. Kevin Costner. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's he is the the equivalent of Mel Gibson. I thought Ernie Hudson was great in Glory. <laughs> <laughs> it's got fucking Morgan Freeman in it. Of course it does. Every movie with black people has Morgan Freeman in it. It's, it, it's part of what we decided in the 60s. I have a dream that Morgan Freeman will ever be in every that movie was, that has black I'm, people in it. 
I'm pretty sure that was part of the Emancipation Proclamation. As part of the, yeah, as part of the Emancipation Proclamation, Morgan Freeman shall to be in every movie that has black people in it. <laughs> Morgan Freeman was actually there. He's eternal. He's a vampire. That's why he looks so good. <laughs> so. So is there any way we can salvage this and not be racist? No. No, that, 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 okay. that, that ship has sailed. That, that, slave, <laughs> that slave ship has sailed. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Uh, no, we're not racist. We love we love all people equally, especially Morgan Freeman and Ernie Hudson. Wonderful people, wonderful people. We love them more equally. We love them more equally, more equally. Anyway, so any other thoughts on Mass Effect Three? Uh, 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 I do have a piece of advice for you. Yeah. I'm playing. Uh, when a side mission pops up. Do it. Do not delay. It uh, these missions they actually have time limits. So if okay. you if you do like three or so missions without doing that side mission, it'll disappear. And some of them actually have storyline consequences for not doing them. So oh, you will be you will be punished in the long. So run. are you talking about like um, there's the missions that are labeled priority? I'm assuming those are like main story missions. Yeah, uh, priority ones you can just ignore until you actually want to do them. Okay. Okay. That's it's, pretty much it's what I the side missions that pop up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what I um, was going off of, but I was I didn't know they disappeared. Yeah. Uh, for example, there's a mission. Uh, we actually meet up with Jack again. Do I'm assuming her? it's the academy one. Yeah, it's the academy. Yeah, and, that's exactly what I thought. I would just meet up with her again. Yeah. Go go do that as soon as you can, because otherwise. There are story implications for that later. Yeah, I just got that today, so I'll probably end up doing that whenever the fuck I get around to it again. Who knows? I've been bug fixing today. Yeah. All right, how about, how about you, Chris Davis? Oh, that's right, you didn't play anything because you've been busy. All, the only time I've had to play games, uh, which has been very little, I devoted to Payday 2, and that's been like an hour, maybe two. You were talking about that last Thanks. week. Yeah. yeah, and it's still fun. Yeah, I really wish I bought that during the Steam sale. There's a couple of games I wish I bought during the Steam sale, like um, uh, the Don't Starve. Mm-hmm. I I still haven't picked that up. Yeah, I picked that up on the cheap when the uh, the sale kind of glitched on it. Was it like a 150 percent off or something? It was like 67 cents or something like that. Ah, oh, damn it! I <laughs> wish I actually got it. Then. 67 cents. Something that's, like that, yeah. That's insane. That's insane. All right, well, let's let's move on to news. Do we have any news? We do. We there has actually been quite a bit right. of news this week. Chris Davis, take us, yes. take us down that that newsy way. That 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 water. Take us down that waterfall of news. Let it okay. let it pour I, over I, I my naked, we can work. glistening. I'm not done talking about the news yet. Naked, make it pour okay. over my naked, glistening body. Okay, now I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, okay. All right. I've got like five stories we can really work with, but uh, here we go. Uh, first up, most recently, uh, you remember Joseph Staten? Staten Island? Uh, not quite. He, he was the writer and design director uh, at Bungie. He uh-huh. was one of the original founders. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he left the company mm-hmm. uh, recently. I think maybe, maybe September or October. Well, it turns out he's gone back to Microsoft. Interesting. And he it looks like he may be working with the 343 Industries team. On Halo. Yeah. He's gone back to Halo. All right. Which is kind of strange because I mean he was like the the he was the writer and design director behind Destiny. Well, I think huh. I I think I, I there might not be much left to do at, with Destiny for that right now. Like they're they're probably doing bug fixing and internal stuff and gameplay mechanics. Like narrative and story might be done with at this. Yeah, point. stories probably was finished yeah. um, months ago. Yeah, so that that makes sense. I mean, he might just be hanging out there, you know, wondering what he wants to do. I mean, I I like I'd like to think that you know when a project is is done. And your role is finished. You sort of 
start going off and developing new stuff and developing new prototypes and new storylines and stuff like that. But you know, he's he's been doing that for quite a while and he might you know, he might have just got a good offer from Microsoft that he that you know was was too good to pass down and pass up and decided to take his leave. He's probably probably at that point where his work on Destiny is probably mostly done and he was just looking for greener pastures at that point. Yeah. I guess. But still, I mean, that's kind of surprising. Because, I mean, that that means, like, they're down to maybe two, three core members of the Bungie original team left. Right. And they weren't very big to begin, begin with, so. Right. That company is changing. It's changing. They, they, they've they been hiring a lot of people. That's a big company. Yeah, they have. They're, 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 I, I know some people who work there, and they are not hurting. Let me tell you, their 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 Christmas gifts over at Bungie were PS4s. Yeah. Ooh, wow! What? Yeah, yeah they they they're doing all right. Yeah, they are. They're doing yeah. all right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it happens with any, any kind of company that one goes that grows at large. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they cut back a bit. Oh, probably eventually. Probably yeah. eventually. Yeah. They don't want to go. You don't want to go all Ion Storm. On no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, one it's just one of those things where you like. Um, oh, we we can call it. We can, we we go Iron Storm or uh, what was it? Eight thirty eight studios. The thirty eight studios. Yeah, when they uh, what the, uh, the 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 Rhode Island one. The Rhode Island one. Yeah. Yeah. The um, studios need oh. you know when you get a lot of capital. I know it's it's for a lot of these companies. It's tempting to kind of go crazy. But you got to play it lean. You really do. You really got to play it as lean as possible. Keep those coffers full because you have to be when you when you're running a like a development company or a video game company, you have to be ready for disaster at all times pretty much. Yeah, I mean it's, it's also you want to keep your your um eyes on the goal and you don't want to lose focus of that because if you just are just full Full in uh, focus on profits and whatnot. Right. That's when you start to lose a lot of the really creative people who created the the company. They're all going to go away and start new companies of their own. And you know what? I, I I keep on going back to it, but I, I don't. I, I don't think I could ever blame developers for that. I think it, that that kind of thing always comes down to the publishers. Yeah, the publishers coming in. Well, I mean, it's it's this. I see the same thing with um uh like. You know, my company and other startups, mm-hmm. where people are, are uh, idea of I'm just going to be working for a uh, a startup. Like they like that startup feel, and as soon as it gets to the point where you're uh, stuck doing um, all this paperwork and you're start you know, managing all this other bullshit, they leave. They leave very quickly because it. That's not what the company. That's not what their their goal was. They didn't want to be there for the whole corporate America bullshit. Right. They don't have to worry about that. You know that that uh, I now I got to be a manager. Now I have to manage a huge team and all this other bullshit. Uh, they want to be able to get back to that small team feel where they can execute very quickly. They're very agile. They can just uh, go and code for like two weeks and then just show someone something and then not be chewed out because they didn't do code review or, or any bullshit like that. Right. Like didn't follow like the bureaucratic process. Yeah. I mean, the, when you get a bigger company and you get a, um, a, a lot of investors, you have to go through that process because right. you don't want people taking risks that your company's not able to, to, you know, pay up on right. if they, if they do fall through. So you, you get that it's just the natural evolution of a uh, of larger companies. Like I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Bungie turns into you know a lot of the creative directors and leave for Bungie and decide to go on different things. Because it's I, yeah. Well, I think I think, it's, I think it's a natural thing. I think creative people generally don't like paperwork. They don't like feeling that their hands are tied. You know? Yeah, and they get frustrated. They don't, they don't like be told told you can't. Right. And that happens a lot when you have to answer to investors. Oh, totally, totally. Because they become they become lords, mostly. Yeah. Oh, well, it's the power gets it's a power shift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a power shift from the people who are actually creating these really really interesting, really creative things. Uh, it goes to like, well, we're going to be investing into this company. We're actually going to make it a you know a standing you know long term name and and corporation bullshit. 
and there's we're going to IPO and have stock. It's like, no, nah, now you're going to kind of leech out all that creativity and just become a big bland company. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we'll see what happens with Bungie. We'll see. I, I think they'll yeah. be fine. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to Destiny. Honestly, like, I haven't seen a lot of Destiny to make me that excited yet. We'll see. Some of it looks cool. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic for it. It it looks it, it it seems to have the to me so far it seems so here's how it goes to me it seems to have the Warframe model where it's just kind of a big lobby and you kind of go to these worlds with people, but I've spoken to people who are working on the game off the record, and they said it's not like that that I'm mistaken, so I'm hoping it's not as as much as I enjoy Warframe from time to time, I want a world experience. I don't want a lobby experience, and then I go to the world with people. I'm hoping that that's yeah, not what it is. Right. I'm being told... Because one big mission they showed, it was a mission. It was, it was an instant mission. Yeah, I don't it want it to be mission. instant missions and instant submissions. I don't want that. I, I, you know, that's it's ridiculous. And I've been told by people working on the game that it is not that, but I have not seen for myself that it is not that. So we'll, we'll see. Anyway, next story. Next story, uh, the Double Fine Adventure Broken Age Part 1 launches on Tuesday. Which, uh, uh, incidentally, is, um, uh, what's the guy's name at Double Fine again? I'm having a brain. Tim Schafer. Far. Tim Schafer's. It's uh, Tim Schafer's first game that he's done himself in something like, like four and a half, five years. I had a really weird dream about Tim Schafer. I'm not willing to share. I no, you have. You cannot have an intro. You like can't that. say that without just coming out with it. Yeah. So tell it me, was, tell me your dream about Tim Schafer. We're all friends here, Bob. Don't don't <laughs> hesitate. Come on. I don't. This is something I don't really don't want to ever be publicly. It's available just anymore. it's just us and the internet. Don't worry about it. Let's just start say that drinking the rest of your vodka and then just come I'm back. I'm out of alcohol. Uh, God damn at it, least Bob. in this room. There's more in the other room. Uh, let's just say that it did not. It was very uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Uh huh. HR got involved. H what? HR got involved. I could never. I could never work with Tim Schafer again. <laughs> was that? Was it sexual? Did you have a sexual dream about Tim Schafer? Uh, Start from the beginning. Let, like you fall asleep, no. you fall asleep, and you're in your you're in your your jammy jams, and you're cuddling the pillow or cuddling. No, let's, just, Tara. let's just say that there was unwanted advances, and then HR got involved, and then it was just like all so. Right, no. What I want to know is, was it on you, onto Tim Schafer, or did Tim Schafer onto you? I'm gonna leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> Oh, come on. Uh, that was a weird dream. I see Tim Schafer as sort of a, a burly, bearish sort of man, so I think he I could see him being the aggressor. But yeah. oh, he was. So he was Maybe. the aggressor. He was. I could see it in your eyes. You have a glimmer in your eyes. So was this at a convention? Like you go to like GDC and you're like in a – was it? I don't really even know. It was, it was just, just a weird. random office. Hey, you know, you know dreams. I mean, they make no fucking sense. Did he pull you into like a janitor's closet and then rub his beard all over your 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 quivering body? The fear. Your, See that that I might actually enjoy. your your sweat fear only asking only acting as lubricant at two of his advances. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I sp- no Jim or Tim. And he's like, your mouth says no, but your body says yes. <laughs> uh. I made Grim Fandango. Oh, Grim Fandango. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So anyway, he 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 actually he tweeted about this uh, yeah. today, talking about how it was what, well, the first game of his own that he's put out in quite a while, and he was kind of excited about it. So. I, I'm super excited about it. I, I've seen some of the um, the footage for it. It looks fucking awesome. Chai Tai in like chat uh, says Bob gave Tim Schafer some Mike's Heart Lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i might have yeah. uh but it, it like it it has like that sense of comedy where you're like you're it's it's an adventure game you're talking to the people and it's it's funny it's really funny i mm-hmm. uh, i'm i'm super excited for this i i backed the project i'm i'm pretty damn sure so hopefully i'll be able to play it on tuesday right yeah part one on tuesday yeah 
Oh, there you yeah, go. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that because I've seen some of the gameplay of it, and it's fucking sweet. It's really cool. Yeah, I've been trying to keep my head in the, the sand and not know anything about it before I play it. I've only seen, like, very small parts of it. But it's, uh, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's, uh, I, I really like the art style they went for, and the, uh, the, the, like this, the dialogue and the comedy is just spot on. Like, really, it's a, it's a very much a double fine game. So, what, what is the, what is the style of game? I've actually, I haven't seen any of this yet. It's, it's kind of painted. Like, it's almost okay. like hand, hand painted. And it almost feels like a, uh, almost like, slightly like a, like a watercolor is that almost right? I don't know. Let me see if I can. It's the um. Uh, God damn it! It's it's yeah. You can if you go Google image it, you can see it's it, it does definitely feel like that kind of acrylic paint. Mm-hmm. Where um like it's it's really awesome to see in motion, That's and the 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 voice acting is as far as I could tell, it was pretty damn good. Hmm. So I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Okay. It was Elijah Wood and somebody I forget who the girl was. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't even really know that Elijah Wood is on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he plays the kid, the guy. Oh yeah. So I'm I'm fucking looking forward to it. I'm definitely gonna play the shit out of that on on Tuesday if uh maybe I'll just play it and not work. Fuck it, I'm leaving anyway. Fuck it. Nice. All right, next story. <laughs> That's not a story. That's Chris. Sorry. Sneezing. Are you okay, Chris? Are you sick? No, it's it's allergies, allergies and cedar being assholes. What are you what are you what are you allergic to? Cedar and mold. Cedar and uh, mold. So you got a you got a nose full of uh, tree sperm right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It just went all over my face. And just the way oh, cedar yeah. Cedar just doesn't it doesn't trickle out. It builds up until this until the tree is practically bright orange and then just a big gust of wind will hit it and it'll just fucking explode. Ow. And it just showers everything. Yeah. And I must have gotten some on my car on the way home because I am fucked up right now. Plant bukake. Plant bukake. All over me. Mm. Uh but next story. Uh let's see. Uh, the Oculus Rift has uh, received a new upgrade, and it's uh, pretty much changing the way the Rift is going to work now. It's a uh, so, head yeah, tracking, the, right? the camera? Yeah, it's, yeah, well, it's, the new system is called the Crystal Cove, and the idea is that it, it works with a separate camera, a la like the Kinect or the, uh, or like the, the Wii infrared sensor bar. And it tracks dots and does positioning on the actual Oculus. And so you can actually do uh, rolling, pitching, and that corresponds to what's going on in the game. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the Oculus... They've also... So it's not just the, the headset anymore. There's going to be a camera, camera light bar part as well. Yeah. And it, it, it tracks the, the dots on the Oculus in it. It just takes care of any like head movement, yeah, you know, corresponding to the actual camera of the game. So right. interesting. I can that's see not, them, I that's can, not all though. Well, I, real quick, I can see them releasing the Oculus Rift standard edition, and then that additional functionality as a separate sort of purchase. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, what I do know is that they the other thing they added to it was a uh, an. Uh, an advance in, quote, low persistence for the screen, the actual display. Because previously with the Rift, when you turn too fast, there's a lot of motion blur. Right. They pretty much negated that with this new screen update. Oh, cool. And I, I'm, sure so that, you can, I'm sure a lot of that work was due to the stuff that um, um, Carmack. Carmack has been working with. Yeah. Um, and, and supposedly it looks pretty fucking good, so hopefully okay. we'll see some of it at PAX East. Cool. Anything else? All right. Two more things. Two game announcements for you. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Uh, in the Game Informer cover story that's coming this month, uh, oh, yes. we've got the next game from Turtle Rock. Right. The guys who uh, made Left 4 Dead. 
It is a uh, cooperative shooter called Evolve. Right. And it's it's pretty much a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. The idea is that it's 4v1. You've got uh, four hunters decked out with all sorts of sci-fi gear and kind of uh, placed as like their own individual classes going after one player who's a monster. Now, the monster, over time, by eating other uh, creatures in the world and killing players, can actually evolve and become a tougher monster. So it's sort of, it's sort of a mix me. between Left 4 Dead and, oh, what is that game where you play just the aliens versus the... But it's the good one. What is that game? I, oh, I, uh, it came out for Source, and now there's a new version of it. Uh, natural, natural selection. Selection. Uh, selection. Yes. So it seems like a, a, well, a yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's supposed to work like that. Uh, the creature can have actually have his own objectives, and the creature can actually win without killing any of the players. Oh. They just have to evolve to the final form of the creature and complete an objective. Oh, okay. I like this. I like this idea. I like this idea yeah, of it, four against one sort of deal. Each stage of the creature's evolution has different specific powers, and uh, Correspondingly, each player has a potential counter to those powers. So, like, for example, there's a, there's a medic class who uh, rolls with a tranquilizer rifle, and the tranquilizer rifle can, uh, you know, fuck up the, the, the view space of the monster and kind of slow him down. Right. I like this. I like but, uh, this. It's sounding really interesting. The, uh, evidently, according to... There's supposed to be, like, multiple different variants of the monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one variant, its final form is supposed to be like 30 feet tall. <laughs> so these areas you're fighting, uh, I'm presuming, are pretty big. Supposedly, yeah. They haven't detailed the environments really, but it sounds like, you know, alien forests and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking this idea. I want to see large environments with a, a lot of vertical space and, you know, real like teammates that have to work together. That they can't just do it on their own, and they have you know skills that can combine. Sort of like how in Dragon Age, different skills can combine with others. You know, I'll I'll freeze them, and then your yeah. shots will do more power. That kind of thing, and all over yeah. all over voice IP, all that kind of stuff. That's what I want to see. Yeah, this well, that seems to be what they're doing. This makes me want to play Left 4 Dead. That's what this does. I have actually played Left 4 Dead 2 last week. The I week do. before. Yeah, I, haven't played I Left just 4 don't want to play 2. I just want to play 1. I haven't played Left 4 Dead in quite a while. Quite a while. And Left 4 Dead 1, it was so perfectly balanced, and then they fucked it over in the second. How do you think we should do a Left 4 Dead 1 night sometime. We should. Oh, that'd be great. How, well, how do you think they fucked it up, though, in your opinion? Uh, well, melee weapons were a big problem, in my yeah. opinion, adding those. Right. But mm-hmm. other than that, it came down to the, the new... Uh, infected classes right. like the charger and the spitter oh, and I, all those. I they just like, yeah. they really kind of unbalanced with the the core gameplay that they had there. They were too much. It was just too much. I think. You know. Yeah, they really should have done that. And uh, of course, the early days of the game, like the before the second patch, were the best days in the world. That was before they patched out uh, tank parking. I don't know if you know what that is. No, what was tank Taint? parking? Parking? A tank. Tank parking. Oh, tank parking. I think I'm, I'm a tank. tank I'm a tank. <laughs> no, the idea behind tank parking was when you're playing a versus match, uh, the enemy, the infected team, if they get a tank, the player who's the tank takes the tank away from the survivors and hides them, hides it somewhere on the map. How do you tank, and the, so, uh, tank the tank? So what happens is that if the tank... Uh, doesn't attack a player for like 30 seconds. Uh, it gets enraged. No, uh, but this is before that. So, uh, uh, if it doesn't happen for 30 seconds, the tank will switch players. And on the second player, if that player doesn't do anything, it it causes the, the tank to go straight to AI. But since it doesn't see a player, it doesn't automatically attack. It attacks on sight. So you can set up traps for uh, where you have the AI tank, and then you have all your players uh, situated in a little uh, ambush spot. So, for example, uh, on on No Mercy, uh, the fourth level, you remember that elevator? Yep. 
-hmm. Okay, that you have to hold down that spot and everything. Well, yeah. that's an early early area where a tank can spawn. Now, before the they patched it out, what you could do if a tank spawned early, you take the tank, you go back to the elevator area, you climb up inside the ventilation shaft, and uh, have it peek over the exit just above the hallway leading to the elevator. And so as soon as the survivors come around the corner and the tank sees them, it immediately attacks and just starts fucking things over. <laughs> and it was fucking hilarious. That's funny. Oh. But yeah. That's funny. So I'm, 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 hoping, I'm hoping Evolved will be good. I, I think that you know, Turtle Rock, they I think they've learned all their lessons from Left 4 Dead One and Two and right. they they definitely know how to make like a cooperative experience fun. Right. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. Anything else? And uh last but not least was the other official game announcement this week. One that I am actually pretty fucking super excited for. Mm -hmm. Alien Isolation. Uh, you know let me let me Too tell you soon. let me tell you something. I <sighs> I don't know how good I feel about this. Now, hold on. Gearbox does not have their hand in this at all. I know. This is the, this is the creative assembly. Do you know who they are? They're the, the people who do uh, Total War. Yeah, they're behind the Total War. They, uh, pretty much every Total War game they ever put out is pretty damn good, right? Sure. But, I mean, it's, to it's a totally different type of game. Yeah, they're they're branching out. This is their first survival horror. This is their first first person game. Right. But this is going to be a survival horror game where you face off against one alien, not ten million of them. Okay. So it's more alien, not aliens. Yeah, it's alien isolation. It's okay. Not aliens. Okay. I like that. Yeah, it, the idea is that you play as Ripley's daughter, uh, fifteen years after the events of the first film. Right. And uh, you go to this abandoned uh, station where you're trying to find the flight recorder for the Nostromo, uh, the ship that uh, Ripley blew up. And uh, on board on the station, you're, you're part of a team, but somehow an alien is on board. And it's, it's not just a standard soldier alien. It's like a nine-foot-tall motherfucker. Right. And it is not only incredibly smart, it actually adapts to players' actions. The alien will actually learn from players' movements and their tricks to – or their, their actions to trick the alien into going elsewhere and will learn from those tricks and hunt down the player better. Uh, see, that, that to me and sounds it's, it's like – it's basically – That sounds like a lot of there, marketing. There are no things. guns. There is no way to defend yourself in the game. This is amnesia with aliens. Okay, no guns. Is he that, so that's my problem. It's amnesia with aliens. What's wrong with that? I've played that game already. It's called Amnesia. I, I, I just, I, I'm not sure if I want... Like, I have already have Amnesia, and now I have Amnesia with pigs, and now we have Amnesia in an asylum, and now we're, we're getting Amnesia in uh, abandoned buildings... And now we're getting amnesia in the aliens universe. Space. In space. Right. I mean, it seems like you want to be able to have something that's more risk taking, like where I, you're, you're able, they're doing something different, something new, instead of just following a formula. Yeah, I mean, all these games are just amnesia in different in different environments. That that may be true, but at the same time, this is a AAA project. You know, those amnesia games. You know, they didn't have those budgets. They couldn't create worlds you, as vast as these. You know what? Budget doesn't of, mean... Of, of level detail. You know. Budget, budget... If you look some of these screens of here, some of the mean, gameplay footage that's available out there, I mean, it is spot on matching the, the aesthetic of the 79 film. I, I mean, every ounce of it. I don't give a shit if I've played the game already. If it's just amnesia with better graphics, like, AAA budget, budget doesn't mean a goddamn thing to me. You know, you saw my number one game. How much budget budget was in that? You know, I I, I just I, I I'm looking at it and I'm seeing a game I've played multiple times, and I'm seeing a game that keeps on getting remade, 
and you know that doesn't really do much for me like for instance like the the, the other game i don't remember the name at the moment but it's it's the sci-fi game that's solely that's coming out and it's where you use the camera and things look kind of yeah i was thinking about that what the fuck is it, it starts with an r e republic no 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 it's no. Uh, um it's the space one where you you're using a gun and it's got the the like or you have a CRT thing when you're moving around. It's like a 1980s routine. 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 Yeah. There we go. I mean, the thing that, that people are excited about that game is not that it's like Amnesia or anything like that. People are it's excited, entirely new. Uh, people are excited about that because they're saying it's a spiritual successor to System Shock 2. And System Shock 2 has a ton of stuff. It's all about systems. It's all about finding things and building things and defending yourself and killing enemies and finding stuff and exploring this world. I mean, it's not just hiding from scary shit. You know, um, I just I, I don't know, like I, I'm tired. Of, I'm, get, I'm getting a little tired of, oh, there's a scary thing. Let me hide in the in this closet until it goes by. And and the graphics start being all weird to show that I'm scared and then I can move on. I just I, I think we need more. We need more than that. Maybe this game has it, but I'm just I'm a little concerned that it doesn't, you know, and it, you know, and it has a triple A budget great so that means there's more polygons and the lighting system is better but if you know if the gameplay is the same that that's gonna get dry pretty quick you know i don't know i i, I, I know. think there is a market and i think there's a lot of people who have been excited to have a a core survival horror game experience mm -hmm. that doesn't have you shooting everything in sight mm -hmm. yeah. I know that, and I'm fine with that. I just want—I just—I'm hoping they do something else with it. You know what I mean? I'm hoping they do something else with it. It's just that I've seen a lot of games come by this past year, this past two years, that haven't done a lot with it. You know, I mean, Amnesia was great, and then we came—they came out with you know—they're coming out with other games that are sort of the same thing. And I, I, I want—I want a little bit more than that. You know, is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? Am I an asshole? Am I a horrible fucking asshole? I might be. I, I, I guess I'm just I'm not seeing. Since I don't play these games very often, but I do enjoy them. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I would kind of like more of the same because you don't get to experience that very often. I, I, I would disagree. I, I think we experience it a lot. We have amnesia, amnesia for pigs. We have. The other two games, are names I can't remember, one is in the Asylum and the other one is going to be like Spelunking that's coming out, you know? I'm uh, thinking of Outlast and I think you're thinking of Daylight. Yes. Yeah. That, are, thing about, that are practically interchangeable. The, uh, not, not necessarily because, well, for them example, Daylight, random, Daylight is a procedurally so. generated game. Yeah, it's I a different know. experience every single time. And that's, yeah, no, uh, it's going to be the same experience once you've experienced oh. all the... Combination. It's the same experience. It's just different levels. <laughs> it's not a different yeah. experience. And, it's just and routine is the same way that that game was also procedurally generated. Yeah, see, and that 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 bothers me because when you when you when you procedurally generate a game, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I just I want a game that has a lot of systems and games like Amnesia <laughs> and all those types of things don't have enough. Like they're good for what they are, but I want more systems than that working interchangeably. Like, yeah. don't starve, don't starve. Those levels are procedurally generated. When you start up, it just it procedurally generates the level. But there's tons of systems involved that interact with each other that make it interesting. And well, there's there's just, nothing to say that that's not in this game. I know that, but I'm, what I'm saying is, constantly running away from monsters and hiding in closets for eight hours is not interesting. It ceases to be. It, it, it's it's just. It was interesting when Amnesia did it, but it's done now. Like, that's not interesting anymore. I need more than that. Well, I just. I, I I'll agree to disagree on that. All right, we can do that. Because I I want more of these experiences, and there's never, at least in my experience, there's never been a game of this nature with a budget like you know a triple a title so i'm i want to see what happens i think i, I don't know. budget is bullshit 
budget is bullshit. You don't need a big budget to make a good experience. No, you don't. That that's absolutely true. You know. I mean, it, it, budget is just trimmings. You know, it's like, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't. We don't know nothing about it. We know nothing about it. All, what I know is it's an aliens game, and it's got to be better than Colonial Marines. Oh, there's yeah. a. There's no doubt about that. You've got to be better than Colonial Marines. All right, is that it? Is that all we have for news? Uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, let us go to our final thoughts of the evening. I'll go first. You know, I've known J52 for a few years now. Oh, let me get him up. There he is. I've known J52 for a few years now. He's a wonderful man. He does a lot of work for four-player. He does all the highlights. He gets, he gets clips thrown at him all the time. Here, J52, here's 18 hours of footage. Find something funny. And then when he shows up at, at uh, conventions and, and meetups, he's kind of a wallflower, doesn't talk very much. But this picture, this picture shows the passion that's in that beautiful man. That wonderful passion. Here's what I want everyone to do. I don't think making J52 your Facebook is enough. I mean, your 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 form is enough. I think everyone should take this picture and make it your Facebook page, and then link back to him. Tag J52. I want J52's picture everywhere. If you own an OK Cupid account, make this your profile picture. If you're on Steam, make this. Your profile picture. Facebook, yes. If you have a MySpace, do it. Is Friendster still around? Do it. I don't know. I had your cell phone background. If you if a cell phone background, do it. If you have a desktop, make it your desktop. Put it put it everywhere. I want you to send this to your your girlfriends or your boyfriends and say, This is my new look. This is it. I want to see it everywhere because J fifty two deserves this sort of attention. And that's my final thought. Bob, you're next. Uh, my final thought is that... Uh, shit. <laughs> it's pretty much this every week, but uh, like, I've, oh, man, I've got three more weeks of work left. Three more weeks of work. I'm counting down. Every week, it's going to be the same thing until I finally quit. So... Uh, We'll see. In, in three more weeks, I'll be uh, I'll be free. I'll be working on next gen pants shit 24/7, and terrified that I'm doing everything wrong. You probably are doing everything wrong, but then you'll learn and then do it right. So, exactly. I only need another like what year and a half to develop the game on top of or currently projected. Right. right. <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Everyone needs to give Bob some words of support on his Twitter. I think. So. Yes, we do actually talk a lot of shit about uh, what we're doing in the game uh, on our Twitters. So if you want to actually follow that shit, we, I don't really tweet that often. But whenever I tweet, it's usually something about you know, the game development stuff we're doing in the currently. Right. All right, Chris Davis. <laughs> My final thought this evening is that, number one, Cedar sucks. Uh, but number two, uh, I've been working my ass off this past week uh, doing Game of the Year stuff, and it would really be appreciated if y'all would check that out. It's been taking a this is a this is a forty to fifty hour project for me, and so I'm I'm really putting my foot down on it. I'm hoping uh, hoping y'all enjoy it. So please go check it out. Excellent. All right, everybody, thank you for coming out for Cocktail Time Live. Tonight here at fourplayernetwork.com. Uh, thank you, Bob, and thank you, Chris. Everyone, make sure you check out the main website, fourplayernetwork.com. Like I said, we stream live video games every night on 4pp.tv. And thank you all for coming and watching the show, our subscribers, our non subscribers, all of you in general. We love you all. We'll be back next week on Friday, 8 p.m., doing it all again. Uh, stick around because someone will be coming on. Maybe me. If no one, maybe I'll stream something. I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen. Anyway, 
Have a good night, everybody.